Hey everybody, Sec Engineer here, and today I'm really excited because Checkpoint sent me over a firewall to check out. They sent over the Quantum Spark 1590 Security Gateway, and this is their flavor of next-gen firewalls meant for the SMB space, for the small to medium business space. I was also really excited about this because typically I'm always working with Fortinet FortiGate, Meraki MX Security Appliances, Cisco FTD or ASAs, uh, and once in a while some Palo Alto, but almost never Checkpoint, so I really wanted to get my hands on one, and thanks to them I have. Because the last time I got to mess with the Checkpoint, was with this L50. I labbed up with this one and um, I believe the throughput on this one's like 50 megs or something. It's just very, very outdated. This one's gonna blow it out of the water. So this will be a series and I'll go over some of the best practices and common configurations I do on any firewall. Basically all the best practices, all the things I usually configure on every deployment, stuff like a remote access VPN, your IPS rules, your anti-spyware, your sandboxing, all that stuff. This is new to me too, so we'll be learning together. Keep in mind, this is gonna come from the perspective of a security engineer, so I might not always do things the easy way, I'd rather do it the right way, I guess you can say. So with the goal at the end of the series would be that we would have all the configurations needed to securely host a server in your network. In this case, the example will be a Minecraft server I'm hosting. <laughs> so by the end of it, we'll have a secured Minecraft server in, the, in your network that'll be accessible from the internet through your firewall. Anyway, for starters, let's get to unboxing. All right, and this is the box that Checkpoint sent over. Let's open it up. And this is a desktop form factor, which is pretty standard for an SMB. Quick start guide, probably won't be using that. Oh, SIM pin ejector, because there is an LTE SIM card slot here. Power adapter, Ethernet cable, some anchors to mount it. Ooh, USB C console cable, that's a first. LTE antenna and Wi-Fi antenna. Was not expecting the LTE antenna. That's pretty cool. Oh wait, there's another one. Now this form factor is not rack mountable the way it is, but because it's pretty common, there is adapters to mount this. Looks like we have six different slots for antenna and an SD card slot. That's actually pretty cool. So I can add my own onboard storage for logging. 8 gigabit RJ45 interfaces for the LAN end. On the DMZ there's both SFP and RJ45 but they are sharing the same interface. Meaning you can have one or the other, not both. USB-C console cable, which I have no other equipment that has had that so far. The LTE SIM card slot. And let's put on these antennas. There we go. And please, please make sure your Wi-Fi antennas are always pointing the right way. For omnidirectional dipole antennas like these, usually should be perpendicular to the ground, just like that. Power, proprietary, which I'm not a big fan of, but it's pretty regular for this form factor. Wait a minute. Oh, that's right. They sent this in from Europe, um, but it's okay. This part is standard and I got tons. Somewhere in here. We all have that drawer, right? There we go. Perfect. Okay. Let's plug it in and get this booted up. Oh, but of course, make sure that it'll accept uh, 100 to 120 volt as well. And I actually had to download some drivers for the USB-C console cable, but oh, of course. I, I could not make this up. Oh my God. Anyways, now I got, now that I got the drivers installed, 
Let's plug it in and we should see a post. Now you don't have to connect the console in order to set this up. I'm just used to and prefer to see on the power on self test. There's usually different options there and you get an idea if everything's going well. That and usually I do set up equipment via the CLI. Though in this case with Checkpoint, the method to do it via CLI is not as straightforward as it's been with other equipment I've used. So I'm going to be setting up via the GUI. All right, plug in the other end into your computer. There is already DHCP running on the LAN port, so you should be able to get an IP as soon as you plug in. And in this case, yes, I did. See it right here, 192.168.1.224. So now we just got to put the gateway's IP into any web browser. So the default for checkpoint should be 192.168.1.1. And then you'll see a certificate error. Don't worry, this is probably the only time you should expect to get a certificate error and it'd be okay. And there we go, now we have the setup wizard. And now from the web GUI, we can go through the wizard and do the initial configuration, but we'll save that for next time. And we'll also be going through the GUI and seeing all the different features it has there. And from what I've seen so far, it really does have a lot to offer, so I'm excited for that. If there's any specific features or configurations you want to check out, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to follow along for this series. Definitely check out my other social medias. Uh, I'd really recommend checking out my TikTok. I upload there pretty regularly. And check out the link tree in my bio. All my social media links are there, uh, including for my merch like this. <laughs> All merch goes towards giving away certification vouchers, which I'm planning to do in the near future. Uh, so make sure to stick around for that. Anyway, hope that helps. Thanks.